uh, we are talking about uh, seven spiritual habits of a believer and we say that these seven habits uh, the first one is the word the word and what, we, what do we do about the word? We read the word. We study the word. And we meditate on the word. That's how we can put it in practice. Then we talked about prayer. Prayer should be our lifestyle. Something we do every day, all the moment. We talked about giving. We have been talking about giving methodically. Uh, giving a, a Christian and giving, they, they uh, use the, their three things prayer, giving, and fasting. You'll find Jesus talking about them in Matthew. He puts them together in Matthew chapter 7. He talks about Matthew chapter 6. He talks about prayer. He talks about fasting. And he talks about giving. Then we said that we talked about evangelism or uh, uh, preaching the gospel. And we said about it that we preach in our, in our words and our deeds. Yesterday we talked about Christ's eminent return. These are things that should capture our minds. They should be habitual. In our lives, they should be rituals. Today, I want to talk about the last one or the seventh one. Uh, gracious, help us with the echo. Uh, we, are, we are going to start. We are, I want to uh, uh, wind up with uh, the seventh one called uh, discipleship. Disciples. You're talking about witness. Okay. So, so uh, disciple. Uh, we are in the age where people want to be mentored. They come to me. I don't know if you, you get to them that people call you and they're like, I want you to be my mentor. In the 21st century, we have, we have come up with that word called mentorship. But uh, there's a difference between a mentor and a disciple maker. When you want me to mentor you, you have seen something in me that you want to learn from me. So the relationship starts from you to me. Chata ndi se wali gwe ayagalo kumango oigiriza oigiri guayagalo kuiga okuva jendi gwa chita ndi se atete chita ndi kidene wangu. Which means it's not comprehensive. There's a particular part you want from me. E chita geza atino sicha amanyi nyo sicha nego wali wakantu wakatune nyo kota dekesi la koyagalo okuva jendi. So with mentorship. Chita geza ati it means you have seen something in me and you want to start a relationship with me. And if I give you, you, you get close to me and you find that I'm so principled and I am that, when, that I have a lot of principles then you terminate but with the discipleship it is the discipler that picks the disciple Yalonda Abaigirizwa. 
seeing what they don't see in themselves and he, he has the potential to help them not become just like him but to become what they were created to be nti ono muyigiriza atunulira abantu bano ngabali na echintu cheba ino okufuka na yenga tebamanyi yenga ino obusobozi obano nako sikufuka anga ye na ye bo bafuke cheba itibu okubera so a disciple is a lifelong learner omuntu omuyigirizwa ye aiga obulambe bonna in the context of Jesus is a student of Jesus. Bwe tubanga tutunulide Yesu ngo muyigiriza omuyigirizwa wa Yesu aba muyizi wa Yesu. That's why in Ephesians when Paul was talking about writing to the Ephesians he told them you have not learned Christ like so. Era Yesu nga rwachi Paul we yali abulira abefeso yabagama anti no a disciple is a student of Christ. So in the Bible, it is a general word, a specific, a specific word is a Christian, but the general word is a disciple. So a disciple is an intentional relationship, discipling is an intentional relationship. Okola we in kola gana intentional relationship. In which, in which we walk alongside other disciples. I beg your pardon. In which we lo, we walk al, 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 along other disciples. Ngera na fetu. In kola gana enege e bwenzi jaji nganja gala kola muigirizwa. Mm. Omu zinchi gende lirua. Nganja tutandike we in kola gana eno. Mm. Na yenge in kola gana eno. Ogenda kubango otambula na balaba igirizwa balala. Okay. Okay. Mm. Okay. Now let me re repeat the definition. Mm. Disi discipling is o an intentional relationship. Okufula ba igirizwa. Chintu. In which we walk alongside other disciples. In order to encourage. To equip. And challenge one another in love. To grow toward the maturity in Christ. Now you find there is encouraging. There is equipping. There is challenging one another in love. So it is in the church where people don't get a challenge. Someone does something which is exceptional and someone is not challenged at all. You are not going to learn. May I get challenged very quickly? And Ronald so knows it. I can go to him and ask this and I ask him this. How do you learn this? How do you learn this? I'm just challenged that he can do things that I cannot do. So I'm challenged to learn and I'm challenged to learn and I'm challenged to learn and I'm challenged So the little things I know in internet and those software stuff, I've learned them from him and Gracious. By going to them and ask them, how do you do these things? How comes you know these things? At the times they tell me, how comes you know the and we don't know. We and challenge each other. And every time we sing, we have a ton of ton of energy. The internet, busy, or kuva ku gracious, never on a day on a rachi. Kuva ngangenda yoni mbabuza chino chikolota. Rachi mwe muchimani ngazi chimani. Era na volumu ba mbabuza. Guengo mani bai bonga fete tu jimani. So it is a challenging relationship. Chitegeze kola ganeno ya kwe so moza na yemu kuagala. So is discipleship important? It is important. Very important. Number one. 
It helps believers to grow in their faith. Believers. I told you, believers are people that trust in something they don't fully know. Number two, it helps us grow into maturity. It helps us to grow in wisdom. It helps us build our faith on a strong foundation. So that we can help disciple others for Christ. So there are three types of levels of uh, disciples. Number one, we have those we call curious curious disciples or uh, those who are professing uh, they are just professing the faith they are curious eh? and Jesus always calls them a multitude of disciples he calls them when, one time Jesus chased them in, Matthew, in John chapter 6. He chased them, he told them what to do, and they could not do it, and they were just asking questions which are contrary. He cast them away, and only those progressing, those disciples that are progressing in faith are the ones that remain, the twelve. In Luke chapter 6, Muluka, verse 17, you can see some of those uh, professing, those just professing the faith. Verse 17 says, And he came down with them and stood on the level place with the crowd of his disciples. He calls them Gubina. This is just a Gubina. He is calling them disciples. He does not call them other names. They are still disciples, but they are in the multitude. John 6, says, From the time many of his disciples went back, and walked with him no more. So when we talk about discipleship, we are talking about a committed learner. But we have here disciples that are deserting Christ. So which means there are levels of being a disciple. Next we have a group that we can call those who possess the faith. Those who are convinced at least. But Matthew chapter 16 and verse 13. Hear what the Bible says. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked, he asked his, his disciples, saying, who do men say that I, that I, the Son of Man, am? And he is, is having the twelve of Remember he had the servant and the crowd? Now he zeroes down to the, to the twelve. And he's asking them, my focus has been on you. Three and a half years I've been training you. And he takes them to Cecilia Philippi. 
This place was a, a place of demon worship. And there was a place where they thought that it was the gate of hell. There was an opening in the earth where the water was bubbling. So the people made their shrines thinking that that was the gate of hell. So Jesus takes them to that place. And asks, when he's in that place, he asks them, Who do you think I am? He starts with this question. A general question. What do people call me? The people that you find there in the families, in your families, what do they call me? And here there are answers, general answers. Some say you are John the Baptist. Others say you are Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. Others say you are one of the prophets. And Jesus came down to the people that he has intentionally made relationship with him that they may learn from him, they may be students, his students. Katuolo Yesu naka esate na yongero kulisa kubana abantu beyagende ramo kuteka wekola gana nabo aberenga abasomesa. But who do you say that I am? Na yemwe muga ambanzani. It starts with a general question. Atandika nechivuze chawamu. It comes to the question that is specific in nature. Katuolo atena ariete chivuzo. Nga china wechisonge de darawa ya garida. At times Jesus asks us what do people say that I am. Elumu yesu atubuza. Ante haba antuba mpita cheyo jemuitida. And we have many answers. There everyone has an answer. Awo buli mtu wabela ne answer. Era wabela ne chokudamu. But if I was specific and asked Roni. Who is Jesus? Era singa mbadde mutere vugurunji nenga mbaro ninti no Yesu yani. Who? How do you know Jesus? Gwe o manioti ya Yesu. There you are going to have find issues. Awo jakufu na obuzibu zibu. Even in Christians today, you just go and ask them, what do people call Jesus? They will tell you whatever. Era ni mupa Krista yoloarero. Osobolo gina no ba buzi anti no banange. Eya bantu yesu ba muitani. They will tell you answers. Era abajakuwe abajakuwe biyo kudamu. Ask that person, but who is Jesus to you? Na ya tegu mubdamu mubuzi anti gweri gweri gwe yesu yani. Because we are not disciples. We are just church goers. We are not building an intentional relationship with Christ. We don't know who he is. Apostle Paul writes to the Galatians in chapter 4 verse 19 and tells them, my children, he says that he's even crying, Apostle is crying because Christ has not yet been molded in these young men and women. Omutume Paulo awandi kilaba galatia munyaku mina muenda nga gaba anti nkaba omutume nga kaba luachi kubanga kristo tanaba kubu mbibwa mbula mbwaba na abantu. It had been a long time when he was in Galatia. Kubanga ya yama zebanga deni nga alimu ba galatia. And these guys were being taken away by the false prophets. Easily. Nga yenga ata abantu bano baya nguri zibu okubela nga batu aliba ba nabibu obuli imba. And he's telling them you cause tears. You bring tears to my eyes. Eta na waga manti Christ is not yet molded in you. That work is done through a, 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 an intentional relationship. I said, number one, we have those who profess the faith. Those are curious about Christ. Anything can blow them away from Christ. You see those in John chapter 6, they are blown away by bread and bread, yeah. just bread. Jesus did not give them bread. And they said we are going. And Jesus looked at Peter. Yesu natunulida Petro. Haven't you also gone? Na mubuza munai. Gwedawe toba gotobe yunze kwa kugenda. And Peter answered and said, where are we going to get the word of life? Peter and Petro na gamba, tunagenda wanya inechi gambe chobulamu. 
So we have number two. Those who possess the faith. They are convinced. Christ is the son of God. They get the revelation of who Jesus is. At this place in Caesarea Philippi, they got the revelation that this is the son of God. Christ the anointed. The third level which is important. Those who progress in faith. They are committed and they are few. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1 you will find that there. Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. Verse 1. I want to talk about the characteristics of a, a disciple of Christ. All indicators, all the things you can look at and you know that you are either a disciple or you are not. Njagala kuongera kuongera kumbala. Obe bintu ebiraga, obe bintu bya wandi tunulide, ne woga manti nze ndi muyigirizwa wa Yesu obasiri. All the things that the indicators, all the goals that you can look at and say I, this year I want to achieve this so that I can call or be among the commuted, committed few of Christ. Those who are Remember when we talk about a discipleship, we are talking about maturity. John chapter 8 verse 31. Mata, uh, yukana, munana, satumuemu. Listen and listen very well. Muulidize, era then Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him. Yesu, nagamba, abayudai, abali, abamukiriza. These are believers. Bano, bamukiriza. They have believed him. Ngabamukiriza. And Jesus is assuring us that these are believers. And Jesus tells them, if you abide in my word, a disciple of Christ abides in the word. If you're wavering in the world, just go and check yourself. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. You shall know the truth. And the truth shall make you free. If you abide in my word. Jesus is talking to believers. That if you abide in my word. You will not only be believers. You will be my disciples indeed. The intention of Jesus is not for us to just to be believers, but to be his disciples indeed. Those who are committed to him. No matter what storm that comes our way, we are committed, is very sure that those ones will not get away from me. So the first indicator is abiding in word. If you don't abide in his word, please make it a goal this year. Number two. Bearing fruit. You know we have levels of bearing fruit. John chapter 15. It says, I am the true vine. My father is the vine dresser. I hope you can have that picture in your mind. You are looking at the father. 
Tutunulira tata as the owner of this mango tree. Nga nyini mutigu no gombe yembe. Let us use the things that we understand. Katuogere kube tubia tutegera. Now we are talking about a vine but let me use a mango tree because it's what the image we have in there. Ni wankubale tuogera kumiza bibu na eka nko zise chokula vila kecho muyembe kuboja tegera bulu unji. So Jesus is telling us. Yes wa tugamba wano. I am the mango tree. Nti nze muyembe. Mutigu muyembe. My father. Ate tata wangu. Is the owner of that mango tree. Ye nyini mutigu wa muyembe guno. I hope you get it. Now, it does not say that is the owner of the mango tree. The word used there, vine dresser, does not mean owner. It is the, this owner comes and prunes. The vine dresser could come and cut the vine. And talk of the things that are useless. So, the father is the owner and he does that work. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit he takes away. Number one, there are branches. We are the branches on the mango tree. So every branch on the mango tree so these are born again people that have come to Christ. Jesus is telling us that there are those who have come to him and they don't bear fruit. But the father cuts them off. Those ones he just cuts off. And he continues. And every branch in me that bears fruit, that is level one. He prunes it. Now, if you could talk to a plant which is being pruned, if you could talk to the plant that is being pruned, it will tell you that pruning is painful. Why does the father prune it? That he may go to level two. Which level is that? That it may bear more fruit. Verse five. I am the vine. You are the branches. He who abides in me indicator number one. And I in him bears much fruit. Number three. Number one has been bear fruit, more fruit, much more fruit. So as disciples of Christ, he calls us to a life of bearing fruit. If you go to verse 16, what does it say? You did not choose me. As I've told you that a disciple does not choose uh, a disciple is the one who chooses a disciple. You did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit. And that your fruit should remain. That whoever asks the Father, what, that my Father may give it to you. Indicator number two, that you are a disciple of Christ, you should bear much fruit and your fruit should remain. In John chapter 13, why am I putting myself so much in the Gospels? Because that's where we have our disciple. Our teacher. So we have to look at what he was doing. Yes, we can go to Isaiah, we can go to the letters, but here, if you don't, if you miss the words of Jesus, because he's the one making disciples, then we have missed it. So we have to look at what he was doing. 
that you love one another as I have loved you that as I also love I, I, that, that that as I loved you, that you also love one another. By this, you will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another. Another indicator. Loving one another. Number one, Jesus has told us. This I've just I'm quoting Jesus himself, the master. That to be his disciple. You should abide in his word. You should bear fruit. You should love one another. We see the disciples of Jesus by their love. Last day, disciples make disciples. Jesus made the twelve of disciples. Yesu yafuna na fula And one was wicked. Omu yarimubi. So he makes the eleven disciples. They came on discipling others. Until the chain reached somewhere. And then we became churchgoers. The intention of Jesus is not to make churches full. Is to make disciples. And those disciples can come and congregate as disciples. Matthew chapter 28. What do the disciples of Jesus do? This is an indicator. You look at what they do and you know that these are disciples. What they are doing tells you that they are disciples. Jesus says in Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, Matthew chapter 28, verse 18. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations. He's talking to his disciples after his resurrection. He's telling them, go and make people what I have made you. And he gave them the curriculum. Baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the, of, the, of the Holy Spirit. Teaching them observe all things. So you cannot teach if you are not taught. You cannot. A disciple, I've told you, is a learner. So he's telling them they should be, if you want to see a disciple, see someone who's teaching others to be what he is. But what he is must be consistent of what Christ is. Teaching them to observe all things. So what I want from here, a disciple of Jesus, is a, is a disciple maker also. The disciple of Jesus called Paul, when he was dying, about to die, he passed on the tab to another disciple. And this is what he told him as, as he was giving him, passing over his, his mantle to him. In uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1, You therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things which you have heard from me. 
as a person who is discipling ngomu kubajulirwa as a person who is discipling era ngomu mtu aigiriza afula abalala baigiswa there are things that are going to be hard for on you waliwe ebintu ebijjokulirwako because people are watching you kubanga abantu bakulaba so Paul is sure that the things that we heard of him are okay. Ah, uh, Paulo mukafka funti ebintu ebi wuli dwa kuye birunji. And he tells him, "Ena mugamba." The things which you heard of, heard, heard from me. Nti ebintu biyo na ebi ebi wuli da kunze. And uh, which I taught you. Ena nebi na kuye giriza. And among many witnesses. Ah, uh, naba mubajuri ruabanji. Commit. Ebiyo. Entrust. Bikuasi. Bitere senga. Ena bikuasi. Be, these these faithful men who will be able to teach also others. So it is a chain. If we are not, we don't have an intentional relationship of learning from Christ, how will we help others to learn about Christ? kuteka wo kuiga okuveri kristo atao tunasomesa tutia balala byetu taize so i've said being a, uh, the indicators or the goals that you need to work towards this year if you want to be a disciple of christ number 1 you should abide in his word tingami etino ebibu ebirubirwa byandi baddolu bilo kufuko muigirizwa wa yesu omwaka guno ekisoka igo okuveri kristo number 2 bear fruit echo kubide bale ebibala love one another yagala munno make disciples atera nawe fula abaigiriza so being a disciple okubera omuigirizwa has a cost that's why many of you are not disciples. Because it has a cost. And Jesus tells us before you engage into something, count the cost. Will I handle? Let me show you the cost. In Luke chapter 9, Luka esule yomwenda verse 23. Olunyiriri olwas bilimwesatu. What does it say? Chigamba chitia. This is what the Bible says. Bible wanowe gamba. Luke chapter 9. Oluka esule yomwenda verse 23. Olunyiriri olwas bilimwesatu. My Bible says. Bible yegamba. Uh, then he said to to them all. Naba gamba bona. If anyone desires to come after me, that word which means come after me, it means to follow me. It means to be like me. It means to do things the way I do them. In a nutshell, in a nutshell is to be a disciple of Jesus. Let him deny himself and yeah. take up his cross daily and follow me. He yeah. says three things that we need to do. Yeah. Yeti kenga umsala bagwe buliru naku angoberele wanayogela webi to be sat between okola. Denying himself. Echi soko kwe fidiza yeka. Denying yourself o kwe fidiza weka simply means chitegezant. Putting away certain things that are yours, your privilege to do them. O kwe jakebi intu ebi mu nota bikola ngate chandi kugwani do bikola. Other people are doing them. Avantu abalala bikola. Not only things, even the privileges that you have, and you deny them because they will cost you as a disciple. That is denying. And many of us, it is very hard for us. You will feel in your heart when they are telling the spirit is telling you. Don't go to that wedding and you're like, eh, nga kateta againze. And uh, you're comparing yourself to others. You're not denying yourself. Oja kuhuli na mutima guo, nga guku gamba, eh, mba geyo toji genda ko. Neno gamba, nga kateta againze. Orono chitegeza, tuokole balala yeba kola, ate tosobola kwe firiza. Number two. Echo kubiri. Taking up his cross daily. Okwe tikanga omusala wagwe buriru naku. What is taking the cross? What does the cross mean? O msalaba chitegeza achi. Is to make a commitment. Kwe kukola 
that will lead to rejection and possibly death. That is taking up the cross. You know, you find many people, they are, not, they are still singles. As they net same salabagwange, please, please, please. That is not that. This is commitment. It is commitment that will lead to rejection. Many possibly to death. In fact, with taking on, the, taking on the cross, Jesus continues to give us other verses about taking up the cross. In Luke chapter 14, verse 27, Jesus says, Whoever does not carry their cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. Jesus says, cannot. Yesu agamba. Ntio ya tasobola kwete kamusala wagwe nango verira oyo tasobola kubamu igirizu awa. In Mark 10, 38. Eramu mako kumia satu munana. He says, whoever does not take up their cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Agamba ntio oyo. Atasobola kwete kamusala wagwe nango verira oyo tansanira. So number one. Echisoka. Denying yourself. Uh, Number two, taking up your cross and fall, taking up your cross daily and o, following him. Number three is following him. Now what does following him mean? Taking his teachings and his examples as part of your life. The goal of discipleship is maturity. Maturity is the goal of discipleship. As you having that spiritual habit of being a disciple of Christ. I'm here to tell you the goal is maturity. The Bible talks about maturity in many, many uh, spaces in the Bible that are not even, I cannot even exhaust. But in first John chapter two it talks about three levels of growth. Verse twelve it talks about little children. And it tells us the signs where you see that these are little children in Christ. For them, they know that Jesus forgives sins. So they they keep sinning and they think that Jesus will forgive. Then number two, verse 13, part B. It talks about the youth. Here we are not talking about in the flesh. You can find an old man who is a child. You can find a child or a youth in the, body, in the flesh, yet they are old in the spirit. So they don't this is not chronological years. So he says, I write to you young men because you have overcome the wicked one. These are the characteristics of the youth, in spiritual youth. They have overcome the wicked one. That is one. They are strong. Verse 14. Let us use verse 14. Part B. Uh, I write to you young men because you are strong. That is number one. Strong in the grace. 
Number two, the word of God abides in you. Number three, you have overcome the evil one. Now if you want to call yourself a spiritual youth, just check yourself on those three. Are you strong in the grace? Is the word of God abiding in you? Have you overcome the wicked one? Let that be your goal. That you grow in Christ. In Ephesians chapter 4, as I'm winding up, verse 11, again they talk about maturity. Here what the Bible tells us. And he himself gave up, uh, let, me, let me go to verse, 13, verse 12. Uh -huh. verse, verse 11. And he himself gave some to be apostles, some, some prophets, and even evangelists, some pastors and teachers. For the equipping of saints, for the equipping of saints, for the work of ministry, for the edifying, the body of Christ, till we all come to the unity of faith. And of the knowledge of the Son of God. To a perfect man. To the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. That we should no longer be children. Tossed to and fro by the, the, winds, the, wind that, the winds of doctrine. And the trickery of men and the cunning of craft, craftiness and deceitfulness of men. What who do the false prophets target? They target the young ones. They target those who don't want to be disciples of Christ. They target those who don't want to deny themselves. They target those who don't want to carry their cross daily. They target those who don't want to follow Christ. My last verse is in Hebrews. Chapter 5. Uh, verse 12. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. Do you see that what teachers comes back all, all the time? Mm. For though by this time you ought to be teachers. You see that? This writer looks at these people, they are doing things that are children, and he says, but the time you have been in the church, you by now you should be teachers. But now you need someone to teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God. Should I take you back and teach you the first principles of the oracles of God? And you have come to need milk and not solid food? For everyone who partakes only of milk, only, only is important. Only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness. The word of righteousness. For he is a baby. They are telling us the babes in Christ do not need to, to, don't need to demand them the things of righteousness. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age. That those who by reason use have reason of use, they have used they have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. I wish you could re, uh, uh, interpret this. Those mm. who by reason of use, of use of their senses, they have exercised their senses to discern both good and evil. 
abo nga bakozesa obusimu bwabwe amagezi gabwe okwaula okwaula ekirungi nechibi ekirungi nechibi chapter 6 they are for living the discussion of the elementary principles of Christ. The writer here is telling us we should leave them. Let us go on to perfection. Not laying again the foundation of repentance, he gives us those six. Faith towards God, doctrines of baptism, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. And this we will do if the, if the Lord permits. The most important verse here is verse for which you don't read. For it is impossible to for those who were once enlightened, having tested the heavenly gift, have become partakers of the Holy Spirit, have tested the good word of God, have tested the powers of the, of, of, of the ages to come. You see how a disciple becomes. You see what he becomes. The disciple is, is enlightened. Oh no, ayakirwa. He has tested the gift of God. He is a partaker of the Holy Spirit. He has tested the good word of God. He has tested the powers of the age to come. The writer here uses if three. If, 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 to renew them again to repentance. Since they are crucified Christ again, it is hard to bring them back. After someone has tested all of those things, those people are beyond the fall. Those people are beyond the fall. And the Lord is telling us to go to that level. We only go to that level by discipleship. Number one, being enlightened. Having tested the heavenly gift. Being partakers of the Holy Spirit. Having tested the good word of God. Having tested the powers of the age to come. How I pray that we can go there. I pray for all of you that you can go there. The only thing that they don't pray for this. You have to do You have to have personal commitment to say that I'm going to follow up on that. And you decide that I'm going to be a disciple of Christ. I'm going to be a student of Christ. Yes. Either I get someone discipling me or I will disciple myself. I'll read this scripture. I will pray. I will ask the Holy Spirit to disciple me. As he's preparing someone to disciple me. May the Lord bless you. As we cultivate those seven habits. Number when I said the word. Very chakura. important. Read the Bible. Study the Bible. Meditate on the word. 
for me, it is a I gave you the tools how to study the Bible. Prayer is consistent. It is our lifestyle. Giving is part of us. We should not give up on fellowship. We should be evangelists with our words and deeds. We should work on having that blessed hope of waiting and of the appearing of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we are growing towards being disciples in maturity. God bless you.